Andre Karpathy's Lama 2.C is a phenomenal demonstration of how much far you can take a large language models in an attempt to run on lower resource machines. So this is a weekend project for Andre Karpathy. Imagine like the guy who built self-driving cars. This is his weekend project. So kudos to him. So what is this project? This is a project to understand what is it, what is it that you can build in pure C to do inference of a baby Llama 2 model. So if you were to run baby Llama 2 model on pure C, pure C code and like a low resource compute code uh, machine, how can you do it? So this video is basically I've put together a Google Colab notebook to make it easier for anybody to try this Llama 2.C and also for you to explore different avenues with this. Right now, this is based on a model that Andre Karpathy built. It's called a tiny stories model, a model that builds stories or the model that creates stories. But ideally, what I'm expecting out of this video is people who are more knowledgeable than me would probably end up building their model and probably use this code to run their code, their model on local machine. So, okay, leaving that aside, just to look at this particular code piece, Llama 2.C is a simple, not, I shouldn't say simple, it's a single file, like one file, run.c, and the idea is that it uses the Llama 2 architecture and it tries to do the inference. So like the entire Llama 2 architecture is written in run.c and that code is used for inference. Inference means like when you have a model already trained and built, you can use that model.bin file and then create some text like question and answer, whatever that you want to do. That's what is inference in machine learning or AI where the model has been already built. You're just going to use that model or utilize the power of the model. You are going to infer from the model. And that's what this is. So um, Andre Karpathy wanted to build something that is minimal and also so that's why um, the Llama 2 architecture has been chosen and uh, Andre is stuck with FP32 which is a fresh a floating point precision of 32 and one C file without any dependencies. If you go see the C file, um, I'm not very good with C, but you know, like I did my computer science engineering. So I kind of know that include stdio.h is not alien to me, but I still didn't understand. So what I did is I went to code interpreter from uh, code, chat GPT, which is amazing in helping in this. So code interpreter actually helped me saying that what does that file contains so it says that the configuration and initialization is happening then it reads the checkpoint and in the configuration and initialization it defines the structure of code transformer weights run state and configuration and then it allocates memory for run state and transformer weights then the checkpoint checkpoint is the model.bin file so it initializes the transformer weights from the checkpoint file and then there is a main function that reads the model configuration and waits from a checkpoint file then it reads the vocabulary from the tokenizer file which is what used to build the model in and itself and initializes the run state and during the run state, like the start loop of sequence generation, which is to create text while also streaming text, not just, you know, batch text. It's going to give you text continuously, just like in chart GPT. It calls the transformer function to get the output logits for the next token. Given that it is trying to predict the next token, it calls the transformer function for that. And it applies all these things, attention mechanism, softmax, RMS normalization. And then it selects the next token using sampling or arg max and prints out the token and it repeats the same sequence until maximum length like the output length of the text is generated and then finally it does the cleanup deallocate memory for run state and transformer weights still for somebody who doesn't understand even like me I took code interpreters help to create a workflow so the start and the configuration and initialization it reads the checkpoint then the main function is called when the main function is called, it calls the start or loop for the sequence generation. Once that happens at the same time, it also, you know, starts calling the transformer function and then it looks for the next token and it prints out the token and it repeats until maximum length is reached and it does the same thing in loop and finally the memory cleanup and then it finally ends. That's the um, workflow or flow chart of this entire thing. So I wanted to quickly run this and then show you how does it look. I'm going to share this collab in the Google um, in the YouTube description below the like button. So all you have to do is go here, click run all. Once you click run all, the first thing that is happening here is it's running on CPU. Mind that it is running on CPU. So you are very well 
uh welcome to run this on your local machine as well if, if you have got a decent enough machine even if you do not have a gpu that's the whole point so first it's going to download the model so andre karpati has built two models one is a 58 megabytes file it's a 58 mb file and that is the first model which is um, a smaller model after that model is downloaded then it clones the repository llama2.c and then it enters the folder llama2.c and then it starts running or compiling the code with different configuration honestly to be really really honest i have no clue what these configurations are but i saw the documentation and i've also linked how these configurations came up to picture so these were spotted in the llama 2.c issues so those configurations are mentioned here and you can go to the discussion and understand like if you understand c gcc the compilation process you will probably understand it better please let me know in the comment section ideally you're trying to compile this run.c code with some optimization and once you do that then you're going to use that i mean if you are from the python world uh, the thing that you need to know is in the c world or you know any low level machine learning lang machine language you have to first compile the code and that gives you a byte code and you use that byte code to execute the main code or run the code so this actually gives you the byte code and use that byte code to run the model or the final one and uh, once you run it you can see that it has managed to create a story once upon a time a boy named tim went to the museum with his mom they saw big animals and old things and you can see that the story is quite coherent it's not just throwing gibberish if you very well remember the llm llm based uh, sorry gzip based llm that we used on this channel long long ago so that actually threw gibberish even though we really felt that it is a good proxy to understand that G gzip or zip compression algorithms could one day become like a proxy for llms this one actually does a really good job in giving you a coherent story in one room tim saw a big dinosaur he wanted to touch it his mom said no tim we must be good so you can see the story is quite good and the speed is 38 tokens per second but there are ways to fasten it and that is with another optimization called o fast if you run it with o fast now you got a story that is with 96 tokens per second which is quite amazing like if you actually run this and then see you would notice how fast it streams let me run this let me run this for you you can see how fast it streams it's almost like you know the speed at which chat gpt throws are in fact like faster than that and you can see 103 tokens per second now if you want you can download the newer or the larger model that Andri Karpati again trained which is a 44 million parameter model this is 159 megabytes like it's almost like triple the size of the model and even for that model you can see the streaming actually happens really good so I can copy this particular line of code I can go below and create a new line and just run this if I run this you can see that the 44 million parameter model is being run and it the inference is really good like you don't you don't see that this is a llama tool like one of the latest state-of-the-art architecture model running on a cpu machine it does a tremendously good job and i think that's the whole point of this entire code baby llama 2 which can help you learn how you can run narrow large language models on a pc or a machine that does not give you huge computation capacity i hope this video was helpful to you in getting started with baby llama or llama 2.c which can you know at least start a curiosity among you so let me know in the comment section if you found it useful otherwise see you in another video happy prompting